Mr. Andrew Flood with us, the owner, the pioneer, the engineer, ingenuitive, brilliant, yeah. genius, CO, CEO of CO himself. Oh, snap. Andrew, what's up, man? What's going on, Pierce, man? That was a great introduction. I'm not even gonna hold you. I wasn't expecting that. That was low-key yeah. fire. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was all right. No, that Jake was I good. I thought it was good. I wasn't bro. ready for it. I thought you was gonna stop at Andrew Flood, to be honest with you. No, sir. Come on now. Dang. Come on. Dude, I appreciate you uh, bringing us together. Yes, it's sir. It's a good opportunity. And um, I, I know you got your thing going on regarding the brand. And I really admire it from a personal standpoint. I think you already know that, though. I, I try to show it. love as much as possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see it, man. I, I actually appreciate you for doing all that you do to, you know what I'm saying, get me out there even more than what I'm trying to do, bro. Oh, bro, I'm happy. The, the I'm support happy is help. definitely well needed, bro. Yes, man. It, it, it kicks in, especially when you feel like you're doing it all for nothing. Oh, man. And I, and I guess it's often people uh, starting a venture like this, you can... That's, that's, a, that's a point that a lot of people come to. Really is. Whenever they start a business like this as well. Mm -hmm. A brand, a way to, whenever they're trying to connect with folks and they feel like they're falling on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you feel like you got past that? What, may, what makes you keep going? Well, it's, it's more of a journey. I hear people say that a lot, that it's a journey instead of a destination. And I'm starting to kind of understand that because as I move and transition through with my brand and doing different stuff, I realized like it looks different almost every month. Mm. My brand looks different. And I'm starting to home in on exactly what I want now. It's starting to come together. Yep. And it took time, bro. As you saw, like as I was going through the motions, doing different stuff, it took time, bro. And the support really was there when, when I, especially when I felt like I wasn't doing stuff right or am I even helping anybody. People like you would like the video. I'm like, wow, he liked it. So I feel like that's a win for the day. You know what I'm saying? Pierce liked it. I'm happy with that. Yes, you feel sir. me? He got something from what I, whatever it was. So Absolutely. I'm good with that. Absolutely, man. Yep. Yep. And I guess it's a, it's a, it's a hump that a lot of, a lot of people, I guess, wouldn't be able to get over. Yeah. Cause it can be pretty discouraging, can it? Oh yeah. Would you say? Yeah. Cause you're out there by yourself when you first start, you're doing everything. Yeah, you don't know everything at that that you're trying to do because you just started. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a process that you have to go through. You have to be strong enough to get through it, mm. or you're doing it all for nothing. Because if you're just gonna quit when you when you're right there and you about to cross over that mark and you quit, that would be all for nothing. Mm. So there ain't no quitting in this game. You feel me? So it might as well be a journey instead of a destination. Yeah. It's gonna look different yeah. four weeks from now, and well, that's okay. <laughs> What hurts more, the, the, the pain you'll endure getting through this process or the pain you'll suffer through knowing that you gave up when you could have kept going? I feel like the pain of giving up when you could have kept going is way worse. Way worse. Because, like I said, bro, let's say your goal is to strive for increasing your income. What if you were right there and you just threw your hands up and said, oh, I'm done because you had a bad moment? One and, bad moment. And it's very possible we're human beings. <laughs> yeah. So that's why you have to, you know what I'm saying, really be stomped down in what you're doing and know that you're doing this for a good cause. That'll keep you going and you're helping people. They will keep you going. So Yeah, man. Yep. And I and that's why I that's why I have no problem supporting you, my man, because I feel like you are doing it for a good cause. But for the people who may not know what exactly is going on, what is CEO? What is creative optimism? So Creative Optimism is a brand that I started and it branches off into different sectors of my life that I provide value in. So Creative Optimism in an overall perspective is creative people who create things of value, create businesses or create gadgets, whatever it is that help the society and help bring value to different people. And I feel like in order for a person to even create anything, they have to understand and believe in themselves before they do that. Because you won't, you won't take the first steps. You won't jump off the bridge if you don't believe. You won't do it. 
So I feel like creative optimism highlights the people who are creative, created in the image of God and people that believe in themselves and are willing to overcome the adversity that they're about to head into. Man, amen to that. <laughs> amen. amen. I, like that. I like that a lot. I appreciate it. You know, for, for some people, it may be a lot. They might look at you, see what, you're, see what you have just said right there, and they might reply, you know, Andrew, maybe it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. You know, how does someone be CEO? How, how is it possible for someone to adapt a creative, optimistic mindset? Well, for you to create or to adapt a, creative, a creatively optimistic mindset, you would have to embark on that journey. You're going to have to go in your room, pack your clothes, get your toothbrush, mouthwash, face wash, and hit the road. <laughs> it's time for you to go outside, sir, <laughs> ma'am, and start creating your own. You don't want to be under the work system forever, do you? You need to create your own whatever. I don't care if it's your own poop picking up business. Do it. <laughs> and you have to be creative while you're doing it. And like I said, it's a journey. So you won't just wake up one day and just be CEO. Mm -hmm. You got to be conscious of what you're doing. You have to be conscious of the transition that you're about to make. And then from there, you have just now embarked on the journey of becoming creatively optimistic. I like that message. Thank you. I like it a lot. <laughs> I'm off the I'm off the rip with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it all so it seems like you're saying it all starts with that 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 first step. It's that first leap, and then after that, it, it's it's a it's a process that everyone will embark. But it may look different, perhaps. I'd say after the first step, you're CEO. Hey. Okay. Because if I okay. come to you, Pierce, and let's say you don't have nothing going for yourself, okay. and then one day I come to you and you're like, hey. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. Oh, well, that's CEO. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That's okay. it. When you take the first step, I say you're CEO right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as that first step is actually genuine. And, and actually took with, with full, full force. Yeah. You say because, because a lot of people can get caught up in talking about it. Mm -hmm. And they might have these ideas. But then you put, it's about putting those ideas into place. So what do you feel like was, um, was your first step that you had to do whenever it came to creating this brand? Like, why, why did you create this brand? What was that initial jump like? What was going through your head? Man, I love that question. Because this is where it came from. Um, why did I cre create Creative Optimism? Because I noticed, man, I'm around people who are really cool. Mm -hmm. I find people cool. Like what you do, real estate, that's cool to me. I appreciate it. Let's that. say artists, the way they rap and how they articulate their bars, mm -hmm. that's cool to me. Mm -hmm. um, people who have their own businesses doing six things at once, making millions, that is insane to me. And it all boils down to their creativity and the fact that they believe in themselves. So I created a brand where I wanted to highlight that. I wanted to highlight people's creativity, which a lot of people do though. But they don't, they, you know what I'm saying, people don't really follow through. But I want to highlight people's creativity and their optimism because I, I wonder where it stems from, even though I have my own beliefs of where it stems from. I want to know where you got it from. How did you become this person? Why are you creative like this? Why do you believe in yourself so much? Why do you think you're that swagger dude like that? Mm. <laughs> I want to know why. And trust me, you are him. <laughs> you are him. That's why I'm here with the uh -huh. camera trying to get into your CEO creative optimistic mindset. I have to. Because mm. it's, it's interesting to me how people are cool. <laughs> I want to be cool, so I created a brand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if, what if one of the parts that people struggle on, especially in a, maybe in times like this, or maybe it, it could boil down to the environment that they're, that they end up surrounding themselves with, what would be your advice to people that maybe find it tough, maybe not to be creative, but that optimistic part? I feel like that's kind of a prevalent thing right now. How can people change their perspective to be more optimistic in their creativity? I feel like people have to understand who they are. You have to understand who you are. You have to, you have, to have a base foundation in yourself, which is why now it's gonna get kind of into the, to the Bible field now, where it's like you're created in the image of God. 
you we were made to create things. This is my belief, though. But you gotta you gotta find where your strength is gonna come from. But I believe that we are all created in the image of God, which is why so many people do so many different things because we all have a different aspect of God. We all see things differently, and I feel like through people's creativity, there's no other. Wait, what was the question again? <laughs> I started going off left. It's all right. When, in, in times like this, when especially with uh, immediate gratification nowadays and and social media. And maybe if you don't get immediate gratification, you always get feedback. And maybe it may, it could not even be good feedback. It could be people hating on you. Oh, yeah. Perhaps. Oh, yeah. But how do you stay optimistic in your creativity? Yeah, like all that that I said. And like like I said, it's, um, it comes down to having that base foundation, man. You can't. It's, it's more so of an anxiety, bro. It's anxiety over faith. You can't have both. If you're not moving, it's because you have anxiety. If you're moving, it's because you have faith. So <laughs> too many people get stuck on the uh, the anxiety part, and so do I. I had to over- overcome that too, mm-hmm. and I still have to overcome that every day as I do different stuff, different stuff that I've never done. You're going to have anxiety. But once you cross that, on the other side of anxiety, you have to flip it. You got to focus on the other side, which is the faith. You got to have faith while you're doing this stuff. And that'll, that'll keep you going, bro, because there will always be the anxiety. There will always be the fear. So there's no way that can be the reason you don't go forward. So it's about having a base foundation and believing in yourself and creating a person who you, who you know you're supposed to become. I like that. I like that following a purpose. Thank you. Very well said, actually. You know, you, you have these thoughts now. And you have these outlooks and perspectives now in this moment of your journey and creating this venture. If there was some advice you could have gave yourself when you first started with what you know now, what would that look like? Some advice I would tell myself before, I, before or when I started. Yeah, when you when, when you I started. started. Yeah, you 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 can't do not make your moves based off of how other people are going to feel. Do not do that because that'll, that'll keep you mentally locked up because you have to understand when you start something, you have to bring it to the world so people are going to see you. So it's like, how do you want to portray yourself? How do you want to, how do you want people to see you? You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's about having the right look and not caring what anybody thinks about that look because at the end of the day, People are gonna have something to say. <clears throat> That's the number one thing that'll stop a person is, bro, why are you doing that? You know you can't do that. Da 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 da. But if you f- if you feel like you can or there's a good reason to, you can't let that person ring in your head because you mm-hmm. will not. That anxiety will mess you up. Mm-hmm. The person will give you the anxiety too. So it's like don't listen to nobody, and be well. Well, now I shouldn't say that. Listen to people, but make sure you take it with a grain of salt. And make sure you're doing this for the right reasons. That's what I would tell myself. Because if you're doing it for the right reasons, then you won't have to worry about this person saying this, that, and the third or whatever. Because mm-hmm. I'm on the good side. I'm not doing evil. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So, so to the people who may be stuck in a position where they, they might not know what exactly their their personality is or maybe um how do i say this i guess for lack of better words who they are Mm -hmm. how what would be your advice for how people can distinguish what they perceive themselves to be versus the person they actually are destined to be hmm that's a deep question right there pierce whoa all right so how do you know that when you're guided by purpose rather than if you're guided by another external factor, maybe like maybe like confirmation from the outside world? How do you know when you're guided I by a purpose? You. I feel like you'll start feeling convicted. Like you, you won't feel like you're doing enough. You'd be like, you'll start feeling like there's more to life. You'll start feeling like I'm doing something, but it, something's off. I feel like you can get a, you have a sense of when you should be doing more or when you're doing too much 
or if you're not doing anything at all, you're, I feel like there's a sense that will convict you into feeling like I should be doing something else or I shouldn't be doing this or I should be doing a little bit more. You know when you're not trying your hardest. Mm. So if you're not really trying your hardest, you will know that. It's not, it's not a thing where it's like, oh, I'm not trying my hardest, but no one will see. You will. You know you ain't. So you just cheating yourself. Mm. So I feel like don't try to be a person you're not, you know what I'm saying? Because it will come out eventually. Be who you are and show that. Work on that. Build that. Because that'll get you further and actually to the person you want to be. Mm. Don't, don't look at somebody and say, I want to be that. Look at somebody and take some traits for them, from them. Don't be them. Be like them. Be like them. Be God-like. Be like them. Instead of trying to be a person you aren't. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I like that. Especially when, especially that word you use, convicted. Mm -hmm. If you feel convicted, you feel um, you're very firm that your belief, well, you're very firm in the belief that what you're doing is right. Because mm -hmm. I guess you can always get that sense. I'm like, ah, this, this, something's just not sitting well with me, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, or maybe you can tell when you're, when you're putting up a front, too. Right. And a lot of times, from external factors, people can also tell when you are putting up a front. Mm -hmm. And that's another telltale sign as well. So, but anyways, I, yeah. I, I digress. What CO is now and what you're doing with it right now versus what you want it to be in the future, or I guess I should ask it like this, what do you expect creative optimism to be in the future once it's all said and done? How do you want it to be remembered? Dang, that's a good question. How I want it to be remembered. In the end, I want creative optimism to be a big network. I want to have a network of people who do different stuff, which is like back to why I created it. I want to know the people who do the cool stuff. I want to know the people who do real estate. I want to, I want to know the people who, who do artist work. I want to know the people who do um, charity work, whatever. I want to know these people. And at the end of Creative Optimism, when I can't run it no more, I want people to be able to know that there's a diverse network of people that are willing to work with you and they can't do it without you. Mm. I want you to know that that your your creativity needs to be added onto whoever you're looking up to, whoever you want to be like. Your creativity needs to be a part of that in the end. And I want that's what my final message I think will be at this very moment is your creativity matters and without your creativity they won't make it. Cuz mm. eventually they're going to have to pass their stuff down to somebody else and you're growing up and eventually you're going to meet because it's out with the old and with the new. And you mm. need to be creative. You need to be CEO when you get there. You have to be because you're up next. Uh, okay. And your creativity matters. There we go. I promise you it does. There we go. So yeah. I hear a lot of, I hear you referencing a lot to, to networking and the intertwining of different minds and whatnot. What is so important about having a community around you versus thinking you can do everything on your own? In a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Ooh. That's from the Bible. I can't tell you what verse, can't tell you what line. I just know it's But there. you remember the line, though. Yeah. You remember yeah. the yeah. I like it. Of I like it. There's safety. So let's say I get, let's say I want to move out. I'm coming to Pierce. Easy. If I didn't know you, it wouldn't be that easy. I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be able to make the process as fast as it could be hmm. or whatever, as it should be. Um, if I don't, if I don't know, you, we all are here for each other. I feel like I feel like we're all here for each other. We're here to help each other out in a different aspect, in a different way. Like you're helping me out right now, and you don't even have nothing to do with cameras. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of fascinating to me. It's kind of interesting how I can't do this by myself. So I need people. You need people to mm -hmm. carry out the mission that you're trying to carry out, and it's going to be random people who you never thought would it would be. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I feel like human beings are on this earth to collaborate. Mm -hmm. You can't be a one-man army. And if you are, shout out to you, it's going to fall eventually. Not speaking bad on you, but there's no company out here that's working by their self. So I feel like human beings need to understand that collaboration is the key to, to life. We need people. You need 
clientele to even run your business. You need people. Mm -hmm. So collaboration is definitely a key to life to me. So in a world currently mm -hmm. that is so polarized and is so tribalist, I guess would you say, mm -hmm. how, how can we learn to come together and find common ground when everything seems so divisive? Well, I don't think we ever will, only because the world is so diverse. The world is so big, we grew up in different spots of the earth, different areas of the earth. Some people grow up by water, some people grow up by the desert, some people grow up in the rainforest. We'll never be the same, ever. But I feel like what we could do to work together is provide value. We all need to tap into ourselves and figure out what we can provide for this earth. We need to tap into ourselves. We need to look out into the earth. It's not all about inner stuff. You gotta look out into the earth too to figure out what you can do as an individual and it doesn't matter what it is. Nothing is too small. Like it comes down to that optimism thing, man. Nothing's too small. I'm leaving yourself. If you want to make, if you want to make tables, go make tables. If you want to make crumbs, go make crumbs. I don't know how, but go do it. <laughs> I don't care. Nothing is too little. Nothing. So Andrew, since you started this brand yes, and you've adopted the CEO mindset yourself. How have you seen it affect different areas in your life that you think will probably affect other people in their life as well? I feel like it affects me as in like, it'll probably make me a little bit delusional. <laughs> probably make me a little bit delusional. Cause I'll probably look at something that the average person will call trash and be like, oh no, there's something in there that's nice when it's just trash. <laughs> it's just trash, brother. You ain't getting no money from it. There ain't no way to flip it. It's trash. <laughs> it's a piece of paper. So I feel like in that sense, it'll make me a little delusional and probably won't give the best answer for people who want a 100% real answer. Cause I'm gonna tell you what I see and I see creativity. I love it. That's what I see genuinely. I'll look at the paper and be like, there's something in it. I'm sorry. Try to find whatever <laughs> light there, there may be in the dark. Yeah, so I feel like it won't benefit a person like that, but in terms of me, I'm probably gonna be a little delusional. <laughs> so here's a, here's a hard question I'll leave you off with. How do you feel like creative optimism can bridge the gap between generations? Oh, that's good. I like that question. So I feel like creative optimism can bridge the gap, bridge the gap between generations by uncovering value in both generations. So let's say the old generation, they, they're established already. They know they've ran their course through life. They're established in their career field. They know exactly the ins and outs of whatever. The younger, they don't know anything yet. They just got here, we're ignorant, we don't know anything, but we're the new and we know how to operate new. We know how to be new. We know how to maneuver through new. So I feel like the old needs to listen to the younger generation to, to realize there's easier and better ways now to keep things rolling now. There's easier and better ways now to keep things, there's easier ways to do stuff. But for the younger generation, they need to understand that the older generation is not sunning you. They're not, they're not bashing you. They just don't understand technology and things of this age. So I feel like we need to understand those two things and, and bridge them together. And it'll create one big empire somehow because old people using new stuff and young people adopting systems from the old people and how stuff works. So it's, it's hand in hand. Like imagine if an old person just comes over here, gives me a blueprint of how to do this, that, and the third. I just follow it and I'm there because I have the technology, I have the skill sets, I can go research, I can YouTube university. I'm gonna get there quick, bro. <laughs> Faster than he did, <laughs> 100%. He's already running his business. I can tell him, dude, why do you not have a robot operating this? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? So I feel like in that sense, man, we can all come together in that way. We can uncover value in so many different ways, man. But it's up to us, bro. It's up to people to be open-minded. And I think I'm gonna end on that one, bro. We gotta be more open-minded. I like it, man. I like it, Andrew. Well, shoot.
before we let the folks go, do you have anything new coming up that you might want to direct them towards to let them know about beforehand? Listen, man, CO Reaction Channel is on YouTube, man. If y'all want entertainment, please go over there, bro. Vlogs, reaction videos, short films, anything you want, man, we doing it. Anything I can be CO with, we're doing that. That's right. Uh, That's right. Clothing brand coming out soon. I will be promoting my clothing brand on, this, uh, on the CO interview page, which is this one you're watching. Make sure y'all go cop the merch when it drops. I'm gonna make sure it's something premium, something nice. I'm not gonna waste your money. We're not doing that. We're CO, bro. That's we are right. creatively optimistic. We do things and we do it hard. That's right. Pause. Hopefully not. <laughs> no nitty. <laughs> no nitty. <laughs> but yeah, on that note, uh, make sure you guys go follow Pierce. Uh, shout your Instagram, Instagram out, man. Oh yeah, just p.i3rce. That's essentially just Pierce spelt out in some Instagram language. But uh, well, yeah, Andrew, I appreciate you having me uh, having me here, giving me the opportunity to to interview. Such a brilliant young man, I got to say. Appreciate I admire it, what you do, man. Appreciate and, uh, it, man. And I look forward to, to bringing more, more value to light through this brand and helping you out, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it, bro. Absolutely, boss. Y'all have a good one. Make sure y'all stay up, man. That's right. Yeah.